Here is a complete tutorial on how to play Pokemon Battle Academy. To start off, we'll have a board for playing on. Next, we'll have our two decks for player one and player two. Then we will have our deck guides, player one and player two, and our rule book. Here is our deck guide for the Charizard deck. Here is our advanced rule book. And finally, here's our guide for the Pikachu deck. Next, we have our advanced deck. Next, we have our damage counters and our coin. Here's our board fully set out on our side. You can also extend it to the opponent's side, but since it's just me, I'll be having it like this. This is our standard deck with 60 cards a GX card, which in this case is a Charizard GX, which I'll show you. And you'll also notice that this deck has a lot of energies and a lot of items and supporters. So the first thing we're going to do is to take our deck and put it in the deck pile in the corner. So we'll take out some cards for our prize cards in the other corner. The premise of the game is to knock out all of your opponent's Pokemon. Take out as many prize cards as you want. A prize card represents each knocked out Pokemon. So, I would have to knock out seven different Pokemon since I'm taking out seven prize cards to win the game. Then we will draw seven cards to put into our hand. So, here's what our deck looks like. You notice we have a supporter, an energy, supporter, an energy, an energy, item behind that and our attacking card which will be our Eevee. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set our Eevee as our active spot card. If I had more Pokemon cards I could actually use a different one as my active spot card but since Eevee is my only one I'm gonna have to set it as my active spot card. Let's go ahead and start our turn. Let's go over our bench. A bench allows up to five Pokemon and the Pokemon that you place on it have to be basic. But, the advantage of using this is that you can attach an energy card to any card on your bench. To start, we're going to go ahead and draw our first card. Our first card is a Charmeleon. And if you look in the corner, in the top right corner, you'll see that this Pokemon is a stage 1. This means you cannot put it in the bench. Here is our indicator that this is a stage 1. As you can see here, it says that it evolves from a Charmander, which means that it is not a basic Pokemon. Now, the main focus right now is our active card. Our active card will need an energy card to be able to play one of its attacks. So, let's go ahead and attach an energy card to our active Pokemon. So here we have our fire energy, and we're going to go ahead and attach this to our Eevee. Now, if you notice, our Eevee in the top corner has a sign that has a star with a circle around it. And the same with the attack. So, what does this mean? This means that this Pokemon is neutral and that you can attach energy of any type to this Pokemon. That includes any type of energy that we will have in our hand. Now let me show you this Charmeleon. He has a fire and a neutral for his first attack. This means that I have to use one fire attack and one neutral. Again, a neutral is any, so I can use any card and a fire attack. Here, Eevee only has one that is needed, and that is a neutral. And a neutral means any. So, let me pull out a different deck to show you something. Here, we have an energy card that I'm going to act as if I had it in my deck. In theory, I could attach this to my Eevee because the Eevee is neutral. And again, you can use any energy for neutral. For Charmeleon, we could attach it, but we can only use it for one because Charmeleon has one neutral and one fire needed. So I would have to attack to attach any and one fire. So this, in theory, would work, what I have right now. Now here, we're going to go back to the actual game. So if you noticed, we had our trainers, which were the item and the two supporters. So, let's go over how to use these cards to your advantage. So, 
This is a trainer supporter, Cynthia. You can only use one supporter in a match. No, I could use her right now uh, for my turn, but again, you can only use one supporter and I would have to shuffle my whole hand into my deck and then draw six cards. This would only be useful in terms of an evacuation strategy. Here we have our item. An item can be played as many times as you want, so I could play infinitely many items if I had them. This potion restores 30 HP to any Pokemon I want that is currently in active play. I am not going to use this right now because my Pokemon is not hurt. Now we have our final supporter, which is a bug catcher. Bug catcher can draw two cards and then you flip a coin and if it's heads, you get to draw two more cards. This would be the best thing to use right now because there's no drawbacks. So I'll draw two cards, which we get a trainer how and we get a Flareon. Now I'll flip my coin, which I have right here. This is the coin that was included and I'm going to go ahead and flip it. And as you can see, it is heads. So I get to draw two more cards. Now, one of the cards you'll notice that we got was this Flareon. If you notice in the corner of the Flareon, it says that it evolves from an Eevee and I have an Eevee that is currently in my active slot. Now I can actually evolve it. My Eevee goes into a Flareon and my energy stays there. It's also important to note that you can evolve a Pokemon that is on your bench as well. I'm doing this just to demonstrate it to you, but in reality, you cannot evolve a Pokemon on your first turn. So if this was not my first turn and I upgrade the Flareon successfully, then I think that the right thing to do now is attack. So if you notice, there are 10, 50, and 100 for the damage counters. We're going to be using two tens because Flareon's first attack is 20 damage. So we can go ahead and attack with two damage counters of 10. Now, also, I can only use the first attack because it requires one energy attached, and that's all I have right now. Otherwise, if I didn't have one energy, I wouldn't be able to attack. So I take two 10 damage counters and I put them towards the enemy. So if our opponent had an Electabuzz, they would take 20 damage. Next, it is your opponent's turn to use their turn however they want. After my opponent's turn, I draw a card and I manage to get a Kangaskhan. Now, since Kangaskhan is a basic, I can go ahead and put him on my bench. Now, looking at my active Pokemon and my Kangaskhan, I can go ahead and attach one energy to either of them. I can only attach one energy, so I need to look at the options. If I look at Flareon's second attack, it costs three energy and it does a lot of damage, but it detaches two energies. I find this as a last resort again, and not really worth it to use at this point. So as you can see here, it costs 3 energy and it does 130 damage, but I have to discard 2 energies from the card, which I find is kind of pointless right now. Since Kangaskhan has better attacks and I can be more prepared for if someone knocks out my Flareon, I'm going to go ahead and attach my energy. As you can see, his attacks really don't have any drawback, and if my opponent knocks out my Flareon, I will be ready. After using an item, I managed to pull a Kangaskhan, which I will put also on my bench, because then I can attach energies to it if I ever need to or want to. It's important to note that I will not attach an energy because I've already used one in this turn. Let's say my Flareon knocks out an opponent's card. Then I will take a prize card, and as you can see, my prize card is a Charizard GX. Once you or your opponent have taken all of these prize cards, then the person that has taken them all first wins. Which in this case would be me, because all of them are gone. Now it is time to pack up the game, because you won. Once you become familiar with the game, you don't have to use the board anymore, because you'll know where the cards go. And you can go ahead and use a tin similar to this, because it's smaller, and it's more portable. So you can go ahead and put your decks in there and it'll become 
a way better way to carry this game around as opposed to taking the whole cardboard box. Make sure to take your rule book. Any disputes you might have need to be solved at the time. If you like this video, make sure to like. And if you were to subscribe, that would be a huge help to growing my channel. So thank you for stopping along and good luck on your journey with Pokemon Battle Academy.